can't believe me. I don't know for certain that she is. That she has taken to that sort of life anyway. Uh, that's what I mean to find out. Oh, good for you, mate. When I first told you, you seemed to think it was a good idea. You seemed pleased. Oh, well, yeah. I was pleased, all right. Pleased as punch to have stuck up to a nice mannered lunatic who'd give me five quid a week. But I don't suppose you give it to me for the privilege of my sound advice, did you? I certainly did not. No. Well, I thought as much. Which is his own personal reactions to work. Many radio programmes these days are recorded on magnetic tape, like Roy Hayward's series on photography. Enormous satisfaction. That's good. Uh, you come out with the word satisfaction. That's good. And we'll come in again just a little bit later on. When does the photographic series start, Roy? December. If we go through December into January, with a repeat, we hope, in the summer, in about June. Six programmes. 20 minutes each. Well, this chap's awfully good, isn't he? Lewinsky, I think he's one of the best um, lecturers in photography, certainly. Yeah. He certainly gets his point across. Well, From that point of view, I think he ought Good, that's to start be great. to think, that's not... Another programme ready to go on the air, the deadline met. Meanwhile, over in Television Studio B, another deadline for Points West is approaching fast. And now pumpkins. Well, they may not feature much on your menu, but on the continent, they certainly enjoy them. In America, they scoop them out and put candles in them for Halloween. I can't say it now, pumpkins. Sounds rude. Mm. I think I should say that. And now, how about pumpkins? That doesn't sound much better. Anyway, in the small village of Alderton, I know you're trying to time it, in the village uh, of Alderton near Chippenham, they're going to hold, of all things, a pumpkin fair. As the excitement hots up, one of the organisers, Mrs. Alison Midwood, has come along to the studio with some of her pumpkin entries. You know, she hasn't arrived yet. The weather forecast, though, has arrived, and the graphics man makes up a board that will show the latest predictions of the Met Office. And in one of the film cutting rooms, there's still last-minute editing going on for one of the stories in tonight's programme. Liz, how's that gas explosion thing getting on? I just got finished this piece first for John Norman, Michael. What, what about ten um, minutes? Oh, about, oh, about five, I should think. No more than five. I've just got a little muddle here to sort out first, and I'll do your piece. I'll get done in time, don't worry. In the studio, though, Jeremy Carrad is worried. We need a Mrs Midwood. Don, Don is Mrs. Midwood. Right. Have you brought in your pumpkins? Not Mrs. at the Midwood. moment, Jeremy. No, they're coming in later. Are they? You look very nice, Mrs. Midwood, actually. Mm. Um, where are they going to be, these pumpkins? On the table. All around here. All around there, yeah. And we'll probably put a, a rostrum at the end. Are they very large? Mm. Still no pumpkins, but Points West men and women are prepared for such emergencies. If the lady and her pumpkins don't appear in time, they can't exactly wave a magic wand, but they can use a standby story kept in the rack for just such occasions. What do you mean, just there? Yes. If you bear in mind, at that point, we're going to close up the small pumpkins. It should be about there yes. somewhere. Mm. It wants to be at least um, five or six seconds before you lead on to the other pumpkins, which will come up at just about that point. What do you think I can say about a small pumpkin for five seconds? Whatever you do, don't tell him. Now, as the seconds tick away towards six o'clock, the gas explosion story that has kept many people busy all day is just about ready. Two minutes to opt Thank you very much. It was a near thing. Yes, stand by. Ruth. Yes, Jeremy. Uh, I've worked up four seconds with the small pumpkin. And you're cutting to which one after yes, that? Hang on a moment. We're going back to the very large one behind you at that point. The one up on the block in the background. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I think I've got that. And the then idea. move very quickly on from there down to the pumpkin jam on the table. Ah, oh, well, it looks like being pretty good weather for the pumpkins, if nothing else. Anything more for Telecine? The machines, Telecine machines, loaded with the film stories for tonight's programme. Stand by TK2. Right, stand by. Run TK2, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, on film. Cue, Jeremy. 
Jeremy. Good evening from Points West. First of all, the Avonmouth Bridge, the M5 link yeah, across the river, and as we all know, over the past year there's been a success. And so the news goes on the air to television viewers and to listeners sitting at home, tuned to the BBC transmitters in the West. This latest explosion happened when a man lit a cigarette and threw the match down a drain. Gasport engineers and police have been on the scene and the road's still closed. Continuing coverage of news in the West. You're listening to Home Run coming to you from your local radio station, BBC Radio Bristol, the voice of the West. My name is Colin Mason and we play music. <laughs> This little number is called Si Senor. Music for the motorist to mark the end of the working day, at least for some. Out on location, there's still light in parts of the world, light enough to get some final shots of the wide awake turns before they settle down on their rocky roosts. And that crew we saw earlier on location in Israel is also thinking of packing up for the night. Back at base, though, there are still staff on duty through the evening hours. Through this room, the switching centre at Broadcasting House Bristol okay. are sent the signals from London and elsewhere to the transmitters in the West and Wales. One vital link in the chain of radio and television that covers the country. And covering the country from Bristol is very much part and parcel of the weekly radio programme, Any Questions? Montgomery, Alamein, School, Winchester. Yeah, yeah, this is a transmission at 2030. Yeah. The engineers on site are already linked up to London via post office lines as the production team consider the questions for the programme submitted by the audience in the hall. How can any trade unionist have the nerve to ask for £9 a week more in his already bulging wage packet when old age pensioners are expected to live on just over half of the MPs are afraid that their performance would disappoint the public. Members of the team like to make a trip to the moon. Okay, here's a spot of tone for you. Yeah, I'll cut it. There we are. And can I have uh, Radio 4 continuity now? Radio 4, the time is 8.30. Time for any questions. Reaching homes with cosy firesides of a Friday evening. But more practical questions concern Geoffrey Boswell and Doug Fisher in Tierra del Fuego and other crews like them elsewhere in the world, working for sound radio or television. Will their clothes be dry enough to wear come the morning? Not for them, the home comforts, not at least until they finish their work thousands of miles away. We may envy them their travel and the scenery and their sense of adventure, but come the end of the day, this is the picture that's always with them. BBC, Bristol, BSX. News for the South and West, read by Douglas Ward. Positive or less to one. This is your presenter, Brian Roberts. Looks to me like a jolly good bow front show. This is BBC West. You've been watching another film made in Bristol.